Welcome, everyone, today. We are being joined by Congressman Glenn Grothman, who is a member of the Oversight Committee in the House, but more than that, he is the chair of the National Security, the Border, and Foreign Affairs Subcommittee on the Oversight Committee. He represents the 6th District of Wisconsin, just north of Madison and Mil Milwaukee, and he was first elected in 2014. And today, we are here to talk about a report that the Department of Homeland Security Inspector General Joseph Kafari released in just May of this year, just a few weeks ago. It was a really important report. Uh, the IJ raised red flags about quote unquote unsustainable methods of staffing at Customs and Border Protection and Immigration and Customs Enforcement and their impact on morale. Fortunately, in response, your subcommittee, Congressman, um, just for our readers' information, uh, on the House Oversight Committee held a hearing yesterday, uh, June 5th, with the sole witness as the Inspector General. That hearing examined the current management of law enforcement resources and how the Biden administration policies have catalyzed the crisis at the southern border. So just to give our readers a little more background, so in the Inspector General's report, he warned that according to CBP personnel, Border Patrol stations and ports of entry are severely understaffed and running with a quote-unquote skeleton crew to ensure that migrants are processed and port lanes remain open. 71% of CBP agents and officers who responded to the survey, the Inspector General sent out a broad survey across the agencies, and 71% said that their current work location was not adequately prepared and staffed during normal operations. 61% of responding ICE agents said the same. So Congressman, tell me, what was your biggest takeaway from the Inspector General report and the hearing that you had yesterday? Well, first of all, so your listeners understand, an Inspector General is an independent party who does studies or evaluates agencies. And every agency has an Inspector General, mm -hmm. Department of Homeland Security, Department of Defense, Department of Commerce, Wherever you look, there's an inspector general. And the study is an impartial study saying, how good is Homeland Security doing? I think a big takeaway is that morale is low. And the uh, Border Patrol agents feel collectively that they are not getting enough backup, not doing a good enough job. This, by the way, should not come as a surprise. The number of people crossing the southern border, depending on the metric, unaccompanied children, contacts, people left in America, the number of people is up up to over 10 times the amount that was being let in in Donald Trump's final year in office. So with that sort of increase, you would expect an increase in the number of Border Patrol agents, but there is no increase. So what happens? You have all these additional people that have to be processed, including young children. The Border Patrol has to spend time processing them. In the uh, case of little children, has to spend time babysitting them. And therefore, the Border Patrol can't guard the border. And even more people are coming across. Furthermore, the change in policies of the Biden administration, getting rid of the policy in which you could turn people back around and go to Mexico was ended. So the Border Patrol, and I've been down on the border seven or eight times, so I, I guess I feel like I could have written the report myself. The Border Patrol is frustrated in that they feel they have an administration that doesn't want them to succeed. They have an administration that wants them to fail. Why else would you create a situation in which 10 times the people are crossing the border, but you're not adding anything to the numbers of Border Patrol agents? Yeah, it's really frustrating. And, uh, you know, regarding what you say about, you know, the administration not wanting them to succeed, I, I can't even imagine how frustrating that is. And you know, what's interesting about the hearing yesterday, some of the Democrats actually came out and claimed that the inspector general didn't really want to work with them and and uh, congressman raskin seemed you know particularly interested in the inspector general's uh, text than in maybe a little more than the text than his report you know what do you think about that do you think that That's, democrats were trying to undermine him maybe to undermine the report or what do you make of that Democrats don't want to talk about immigration because President Biden is not enforcing our immigration law. So they will say things like, well, maybe we should deal with this problem by dividing the Border Patrol into two separate agencies, which has nothing to do with the problem at hand. 
uh, they will make up spurious charges against the inspector general and claim that he's not doing a good enough job on, say, cracking down on sexual harassment charges, which, quite frankly, I, I think probably happened before he was there in the first place. Mm -hmm. They will do anything but talk about the huge sea of people crossing the border. And then they will say, why don't you talk to us more? Well, he, he made calls to all the Democrat members of that committee. Mm -hmm. Some of them took him up on it. Some didn't. But they wanted to do anything but talk about the sea of people crossing the border. And it's not rocket science how you stop it. The report points out we need more, more Border Patrol agents, which is true. If you've got to process all these people, fill out paperwork, make sure they wind up in the right place going around the United States, you can't guard the border. And I witnessed that a couple months ago when I was down on the Arizona-Mexican border. We came across 21 people. We had to call the nearest Border Patrol station. Several uh, big SUVs had to come out and pick up these people. And we knew when they were picking up these people, nobody was guarding the border because they were understaffed. So predictably, we knew that people from coming up from Mexico with the illegal drugs, which when taken are going to kill American citizens. And the Biden administration has no desire to add new people. I want to give you a little anecdote that wasn't in the report, but gives you an idea of where the Biden administration is. The last time I was on the border, I had asked about drug sniffing dogs. And do we need more dogs? And I was told by the head of the local union, no, because last time they got more dogs, they got therapy dogs because they heard the Border Patrol was unhappy. So think about that. Oh. Given a choice between getting drug sniffing dogs to detect the fentanyl is killing our young people and therapy drug uh, dogs because the border patrol agents were supposedly depressed. The Biden administration felt we should give the border patrol therapy dogs. I mean, they'll do every, anything they can to make sure we're not enforcing the border. Wow, that's really amazing. Uh, it's, I'd call it a great story if it weren't so sad. But to that point exactly, actually that leads me to my next question. I mean, the administration is sort of, it's, I don't know if it's in denial. They they don't really want to even, you know, they don't want to acknowledge anything. So at the end of the report, the letter is included from the administration. They, they wrote a letter in response to the inspector general's report and, you know, took issue with it and said that the inspector general didn't recognize all of the DHS initiatives. I wish I knew which ones those were um, to support its pe personnel and called into question its methodology. So Again, does that go to what you just said? Is this the message that they're just going to bury their hands in the sand and hope people, no one's watching? Obvious and right. They obfuscate because everybody can see or should be able to see that they don't care about enforcing the border. There are two obvious things they have to do. They have to go back to the policy where people should be sent back to Mexico pending their hearing because if they come in the United States, they're here for good anyway. And secondly, they should add more Border Patrol agents so they don't have a situation in which you can flood the border or really the Mexican drug cartels can flood the border so that the Border Patrol is spending all their time doing paperwork, not guarding the border. That's the two prong attack. I should say a three prong attack. The Biden administration has as far as trying to destroy America through illegal immigration. Change the rules yeah. so that you're led in the country don't have enough Border Patrol agents to stop people. And third, in an unrelated area, but something that my committee will take up eventually, they are also not deporting people who are committing crimes anywhere near the degree to which they did under President Trump. In other words, even people who are committing crimes are allowed to stay in the country. And I think you combine those three policy decisions. Again, no new Border Patrol agents, let everybody in the country pending their hearing, and don't kick out people who are breaking the law, and vote a lot. We have what President Biden wants, a whole new United States. Wow. I'm wondering, what do you think we could do to actually change this dynamic? I mean, I mean, are we going to have to force the Biden administration to hire more Border Patrol agents? Because uh, right now their their functions, just as you said, are basically administrative and child care. I mean, you've got no wonder the morale is so bad. How do uh, how do we get out of this mess? First of all, in the next budget, which will not become effective until October 1st, mm -hmm. we do have to add more Border Patrol agents mm -hmm. because that will help to a degree. 
also very important is to wake up the American people. Yep. President Biden says he's running for election. Politicians like to get reelected. If the border, if the polls show the border is of major concern to the American citizens, Joe Biden will have to do some things to make things better, at least in the final year and a half mm -hmm. for his election. Of course, if he gets reelected, he'll stop caring again right away. But I think those are the two things we have to do. Politicians today respond to polls. If the American people are appalled by what's going on on the border, if it's a major issue to them, President Biden will do different things. And again, in the new budget beginning year, October 1st, we've got to make sure the Biden administration is obligated to hire more agents. Oh, I totally uh, who knows how they'll implement that, but that's what we've got to try to do. Yeah, well, I, I totally... I totally agree. And it's actually, you know, why we're so grateful you had this hearing and that you're joining us on this podcast because people really do need to understand how bad this situation is. And it's more than just, you know, the video we see at the border. There's so much behind it that's going on, all these policies that are being implemented, you know, sort of in the middle of the night that a lot of people don't understand. So, you know, <laughs> we want to be your partner in shedding light on all of that. Right. You are, and I know a lot of you out there, or a lot of your listeners, maybe have friends who think that the Republicans are being harsh or Joe Biden is, is being compassionate. I want to point out that every year in this country, we now are having a million people sworn in as new citizens who get here legally. It's not that difficult to get here legally. And that is the most people we've had sworn in since 2006. So it's not like nobody is allowed to come in the country. Plus, there are all sorts of visas, student visas, work visas. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, people are using to come in the country. So nobody can say we're being sticklers here and not letting anybody in legally. Well, that's do that more than other countries do. That's excellent point. And you're right. I mean, so many people wait in line and do it the right way. And to see all of this, this unfairness occurring for those people, some of them wait for years and they, you know, they um, sell assets, they spend money on attorneys, they do all sorts of stuff and their family members wait too. Um, and they do it the right way. Right. So that's just And it's no problem. Uh, I try to every year attend the new swearing in ceremonies in Milwaukee, being from Wisconsin. And every month, you know, dozens and dozens of new people are sworn in to become American citizens. They've done it right. They have proven over a period of, say, five to seven years that they're going to be good citizens. They don't break the law. They have jobs. They're self-supporting. They're the type of people we want in America. When we deal with the open border policy we have now, who knows what we're getting. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. And as we wrap up here, let me just ask you moving forward, what, uh, what else is on the committee's agenda regarding immigration? What do you see in the future? Well, we also focused a little bit on unaccompanied minors. You know, there was a time when the press was very concerned about broken families. I think we'll maybe do a follow-up hearing on that. What about all these tens of thousands of minors who we have lost track of? We don't know what's become of them. We had another hearing, like I said yesterday or today, we had a hearing in which the Secretary of Labor had no idea whether children who are working illegally even had parents in this country. But I think then we have to hearing on, have a hearing on deportations and ask the Biden administration why so few people uh, are, are being deported yeah. and why so many people are committing crimes that are not being kicked out. The Trump administration was able to kick out the people who proved that they were going to be a problem to our criminal justice system, showing that they're going to harm American citizens. Why is the Biden administration, even when it comes to people who are breaking the law, want people to come here from other countries. And I think that's another tale that has to be told. I agree, I completely agree. And we're so grateful you're gonna have these hearings. We'll be sure to be telling our members at FAIR to tune into them and watch, and we'll be sending out snippets to everyone so they can see all the highlights. Uh, but for the moment, we just want to thank you. At here at FAIR, we want to thank you for your time and your energy and your commitment to making our immigration system better. It's truly an honor today. And hopefully we'll have you back. We can talk some more. Well, I thank you for all you're doing to educate uh, 
all your listeners, all your members to what's going on. And I know you have great information. I hope all of your listeners or members are sharing that information with their friends and relatives. So we do raise the temperature on immigration like we so desperately have to over the next two years. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you very much.